keep refreshing, but the stream won't come back. Anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, shout out to the Ravens for uh, presenting Sammy Watkins officially um, to Baltimore Ravens fans. We got to hear directly from Sammy Watkins about this upcoming season, uh, how he feels about his present and his past and also his future. So that was cool to see. Before we get into this, man, um, team, keep it clean. I was really, really uh, just humbled and uh super appreciative uh because i saw team keep it clean in the comment section on the ravens live stream and it it y'all are crazy like crazy and but it was all positivity all positive vibes all love man so i love y'all i appreciate y'all shout out to y'all for like really coming through like we obviously most of us are ravens fans on this channel but on like y'all showed up and y'all showed out and that's a beautiful thing with Team Keep It Clean, just representing positivity all over, man. Just showing everybody love, just a good vibe, good energy. Thank you. And that's the same thing that Sammy Watkins, he also brought um, in his first presser as a Baltimore Raven. And just from that presser, uh, we, we were taking some notes. I was taking some notes as Sammy Watkins was talking, answering questions. But the question, one of the first questions that got brought up was why? For what? What made you want to come to the Baltimore Ravens? Because we hear of so many different receivers and reasons why they could possibly not want to come to the Baltimore Ravens. But why, Sammy? What made you choose the Ravens? One of the answers that he gave was Lamar Jackson. He said Lamar Jackson, that he was one of the big reasons that uh, he came on over to play for the Ravens. But he said another reason was both Keith Williams, who obviously he's familiar with, um, and Greg Roman, too who he also is familiar with because his most successful season of his entire career, he played it under Greg Roman. So, I mean, the, you, you got to think, and, and a lot of us had noticed that before, before Sammy Watkins, did it, before it even became official. But we saw that. When we looked at the numbers, we were like, oh, okay, that was his most successful season. Oh, it just so happened to be under Greg Williams. I mean, Greg Roman, excuse me. So that could definitely, we could see how that could be a big factor uh, into that but also with Keith Williams that is big too that that is very very big too because I was just talking to my guy JT earlier today and he brought up a very very good point about both Keith Williams and T Martin because most of us Ravens fans especially me I'm thinking of their impact post draft what they can do for the Ravens post draft with developing receivers developing players helping them really reach uh, their full potential but my guy JT he talked about pre-draft and he talked about how those guys can actually provide a lot of intel on these young upcoming guys to the Ravens that they didn't have all that knowledge and information before. And I was like, oh man, what a beautiful, just a gem. Anyway, on to uh, Sammy Watkins. He also said that, because uh, uh, another thing that we talk about a lot is the Ravens and them with them potentially landing that guy at wide receiver, that it would be very hard because of the Ravens play style, um, and just the way that they do things. They are a running football team. That is their biggest goal. That's their first and foremost goal. It's their second goal, third goal too, run the football. And they asked Sammy Watkins about that. Um, and he said that he ain't worried about the possible lack of targets, lack of yards, anything like that. He just said that he wants to help grow the passing game and do everything that it takes to win. Everything that it takes to win. And so it and now, of course, actions speak louder than words. And right now, the words are talking about what the possible future actions could be. So we hope they live up to that. But right now, hey, so far, he's saying all the right things. He's saying all the right things. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully we don't see when it's a game where Sammy Watkins is open. Lamar don't see him. He looks somewhere else. Sammy Watkins is the game with one reception for 19 yards. And he upset. And then he get on Twitter and be like, man. I made the wrong decision. And they're going to be like, oh, no, Sammy, what happened? What happened? What are you talking about? He's going to be like, oh, no, I'm just quoting a song. That's it. This is Drake's song. Drake made the wrong decision. Anyway. <laughs> but um, he also said with Keith Williams, this was something that I really liked. Uh, he said with Keith Williams, he makes it easy for guys to get open. And he said, he said, no matter what type of guy you have at wide receiver, Keith Williams can help you and he will help you get open. And he said, he don't care if you run a 
So he don't care if you're super fast, if you're super slow. It does not matter if you're tall, you're short, whatever kind of receiver you are. Keith Williams will help you get open. And as a uh, as a Ravens fan, I have never ever, and it's not a shot at any previous or past coaches, anything like that. But I've just never heard any receiver ever say that about any Ravens offensive staff person on the staff at all. I've 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 never heard that at all. Um, so I don't know if that's really saying a lot, um, but I mean, we'll see, we'll see. Cause I mean, I, me, I, I love everything that Sammy Watkins said in the press of the day, but I'm not going to be like, Oh man. Oh yes. Okay. Well, since he said that this is going to happen, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. We hope it does. And we hope all of the stuff that he talked about comes to fruition, everything, but seeing is believing. And I'm not trying, I'm not being a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy or anything like that. But we just got to keep it real, man. We got to keep it real. Now, my expectations for this season, for this offense, I think for the offense overall, it should still be high. But the passing game specifically, how is the passing game going to be this year? It's, it's still to be determined. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see how everything goes with that. Um, now, he talked about, speaking of the passing game, speaking of the offense, he spoke back about Greg Roman again. He said Greg Roman will do a good job of getting the ball in Hollywood's in his hands. And he said whatever other receivers are there and whatever other receivers that the Ravens end up drafting. Now, with that, I noticed he didn't mention anybody else by name. Um, and maybe it's just because he hasn't got a chance to meet them or whatnot. He did mention Hollywood by name, but he didn't mention any other receivers. And he did that twice, too. But he did say that he knows Hollywood. He said he knows Hollywood a little bit, so they got a relationship. I, I told you, hey. One of the reasons why Sammy Watkins said he came here, he said, one, Lamar Jackson. Oh, where is he from? I don't know. Florida. He also said Greg Roman. And he said Keith Williams. But then he also said Hollywood, too. Where is Hollywood? I don't know. Florida. Yo, man, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. I've been, I've been trying to tell you all about these Florida Ravens, man. But some people don't want to hurt me. Anyway, um, he talked about his health. That's a question that we've all had for Sammy Watkins. And we, again, because he hasn't played a full season since his rookie season. His rookie season. That's the last time he played a full 16 games. And now, again, Ravens, I mean, not the Ravens, but the NFL, it's a 17-game schedule now. It's a 17-game schedule. So all of that is going to take that much more to stay healthy. And they asked him about that, like, what do you plan on doing to stay healthy? How are you going to stay healthy? What are you going to do so you can play a full season? Now, he said he put a lot of it on coaching. He said uh, he's had coaches that know when to pull back, like on practice and whatnot. Coaches that sort of know how to pace them. Um, and he also talked about staying healthy and uh, getting massages and whatnot uh, and doing a good job in the weight room. And he talked about eating right as well. Oof, that's something I struggle with myself. But anyway... He, he, he did, I'm glad they acknowledged that, and I appreciated that they asked about that, because these are the questions, man. And again, still, you could say all the right things, but we just want to see all this stuff be put into action. And like I said, with Sammy Watkins' motto throughout this entire season, prove him wrong, and prove me wrong, prove everybody wrong. Please, prove everybody wrong. Because we all rooting for Sammy Watkins. If you're a Ravens fan, you're rooting for him. Whether you wanted the Ravens to sign him or not, you're rooting for him. I mean, you should be. You're playing for your favorite team. You want your team to have some success. So we're rooting for Sammy Watkins for sure. And we want that boy to show out, man. Then especially with him being from Florida again, that, that helps a lot as well. But anyway, let's keep it going. Um, and, and one of the biggest takeaways, he said one of his biggest takeaways, because they asked him about Lamar Jackson. Because, you know, that's, that's the thing. That's what you got to answer, whether you play offense or defense. If you get signed to the Ravens, you get traded to the Ravens, you get brought into the Ravens, they're going to ask you that question. So you better have your answer ready. I mean, you know you already got an answer ready for it, but they're going to ask you. So they asked him, what's his biggest takeaway from Lamar Jackson? Um, and, and he said that when they spoke, so when him and Lamar Jackson spoke, he said, this is your show. I just want to be part of it, and I want to help out. So Sammy Watkins, he sort of, um, it's sort of like he's acknowledging his role, acknowledging what he plans on uh, bringing to the team. Uh, and that just sounded like a veteran to me. It sounded like a veteran to me. Now, a lot of us, uh, we feel like Sammy is an age veteran. We feel like he's been around the game for a long time, which he, he has been around for a while. Excuse me, but he's, a, he's only 27, about to be 28. And that is crazy. 
Like crazy. A lot of us going into this all season were thinking, oh, Sammy Watkins, he probably like 30, 31. Maybe 32, but probably like 30, 31. Nope. It's 28. Now, his body certainly got a lot of wear and tear on it from all the injuries and whatnot, but hopefully that can be a thing of the past. Um, he also talked about having fun. He talked about that a lot through this presser, which we loved. Uh, and he talked about that it's critical that him and Lamar Jackson get on the same page. Because that it is. It, we, we Trust me, we know. It is definitely critical that Lamar and the wide receivers all get on the same page. Oh, now this question. Because they asked him about him being the veteran in the group. He, he's the veteran of this uh, Ravens locker room. A wide receiver. How does he feel about being the veteran? He's sort of the OG in the room. Uh, and he said that that was his role in Kansas City. Because he said he's with Tyreek Hill, young guy. He was with McCole Hardman, young guy Travis Kelsey. He was the veteran there. Um, and he said he knew his role. And he said that they played for each other. And he said one of the biggest things was their communication. Uh, he said that he'll be learning from Hollywood. Uh, and he said that he'll probably have some different things that... Um, that he can teach Hollywood too. So they'll be able to bounce off of each other. Then of course everybody else as well. And he also talked about one of my favorite things that he spoke about was doing whatever it takes to win. And that's important. That's important. Uh, now speaking of Kansas City, um, they did ask him about uh, like why the change of scenery? Because early on in the, uh, the presser, he was asked, like, well, what made you choose the Ravens? Why the Ravens? And he said he wanted to change the scenery. So somebody went back to that and was, they was like, what, well, what do you mean? Change the scenery? You, you, aren't you coming from some great scenery? You just went to two straight Super Bowls? And we know it should have actually been three. But you just went to two straight Super Bowls? You won one of them? What, change the scenery? Well, who would want to change that? They didn't ask it like that, but that's what they were thinking. Who would want to change that? So Sammy Watkins, uh, he answered that um, his time was up. He said his time was up and he said that he said that he wanted to be somewhere where he could see himself spending the next uh, five to six years and probably retiring. Now, will that happen with the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, I, I wouldn't expect it to. But if Sammy Watkins does end up getting a contract extension from the Baltimore Ravens, that would be a good thing. And the reason I'm, I'm going to tell you why, because I know some people are like, oh, what, what, Sammy Watkins contract extension? If he got a contract extension from the Baltimore Ravens, that would mean that he had a lot of success with the Baltimore Ravens. And then they offered him a contract extension. So, anyway, we'll see what happens. Now, our guy Jeff Zrebic. And, and my apologies, I, I didn't, um, when I was taking notes, I didn't write the other reporter's name. It's no offense to them or anything, but I was just trying to move and I was trying to get the live stream going. Then the live stream stopped and then it came back again, then it stopped. And then it got shut down completely and we were all just looking around like, oh, what's going on? But it's all good. Uh, he asked about the process with the visits. So, you know, how Sammy Watkins visited the Ravens and then he visited the Colts and then it, he was, they were talking about it. The Texans were interested too, but he ain't making that far. But anyway, asked him about the visits and, and they, they asked uh, if it made things difficult for him. And he said no. It was an easy process. Uh, he said it was never a difficult decision to come to the Ravens. Uh, and then again, he spoke about Keith Williams and Greg Roman uh, and then knowing Hollywood too. So, again, Florida. <laughs> hey, uh, And then he also spoke about being in Greg Roman's offense And how he can move around and play different spots Which we talked about on here too You can put him outside, you can put him inside, you can move him around And that's, that's one thing that um, uh, The Ravens, uh, I can't really say they like to do that too much with people on offense um, Because we were still seeing this, this just lack of involvement From different guys on offense But Sammy Watkins, he did say that um, He wants to be a part of the solution he said he knows what the problem is. He knows what people talk about. He said with Greg Roman, he said the world hasn't really seen Greg Roman, uh, the, the full capability and ability of his offense yet. He said it's time for the world to see it. And he also said it's time to see uh, the world. It's time for the world to see the Sammy Watkins that was balling out in college. It's time for the world to see that guy. Uh, because he said that they haven't truly seen him yet as much as they, uh, they should. Uh, and another thing, too, that uh, Jeff Zrebic brought out, uh, and this was after the stream got shut down because, you know, we, we got cut off from this whole thing. But he said that uh, Sammy Watkins has spoke to um, DeAnthony Thomas, who used to play for the Chiefs uh, and used to play for the Ravens. He said he spoke to DeAnthony Thomas and he said DeAnthony Thomas uh, had a lot of high praise for the Ravens. And now this is something that. Not with every single player, but with about like 99% of the players who get released from the Ravens 
uh, who, who the Ravens don't re-sign for whatever reason, usually about 99% of the time, those guys always have something positive to say. Despite what their outcome with the Ravens was, they usually have something pretty, uh, pretty good to say. Usually. Doesn't always work out like that. And it's all good. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion on everything. But De- 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 he said De'Anthony Thomas spoke highly of the Ravens. Uh, Sammy Watkins, he talked about the vibe with the Ravens and whatnot. And it's always, it's, it's like when you're getting a new job. When you're getting a new job that um, one of your friends either works at now or has worked at before. You hit them up like, hey, what, what is it like to work there? How is the manager? How are the coworkers? How is the environment? Because in my opinion, environment, culture, that outweighs money all day, every day. And I'm not saying that you you want to be broke or anything, but you want to be, oh, I, I love the people that I work with, but I'm broke. You don't want to do that. But at the same time, for me, I think that outweighs it. And that's me speaking from a normal job. Like, that, that, that would be me speaking from that, this point of view. But it's the same thing in a not-so-normal job of the NFL. You can go make more money at this team. You, oh, you could go get paid the biggest bucks. And usually, the teams who do the worst, they have the most money to spend. Usually every year. It doesn't always work out that way, but I say usually like eight, to, eight, eight out of ten times. Eight out of ten times, the teams with the most money is usually the worst situations because they continue to have so much turnover year after year after year. They continue to bring in guys, cut guys, bring in guys, cut guys, but at a high rate. A lot of turnover. And it's the same way with a lot of jobs, too. A lot of jobs in the normal world, not in the NFL world because that's not normal, but in the normal world, there can be a lot of turnover at places. And you're like, man, oh, they, they make a lot of money, but you see a revolving door. You see people always getting hired and fired, hired and fired. Whoa, what, what, what's that about? But then you look over to this other company. People are a lot happier. They may make a little less money, still a, a decent amount of money, but they may make a little less money, but they're happier. And you, it's, that outweighs it for me. Like I said, big time, big time. Oh, man. Like, and, and it took a while for me to get this. It took a while for me to get this. It took a lot of experience for me to get this in the workforce, um, in corporate America. To, it, 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 it took a lot, but it's a lesson that I, I, I genuinely appreciate and, and have to share with other people, too. It's certainly not all about the money. It's not. But Sammy Watkins, again, uh, DeAnthony Thomas and Sammy Watkins, he said they talked and um, DeAnthony Thomas had uh, good things to say about the Ravens. So it's always nice when you have somebody that's been where you're getting ready to go so they can tell you about it. They can sort of show you the ropes. They can tell you the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, and everything else in between. Uh, so that can give you more confidence in your decision moving forward. So anyway, shout out to Sammy Watkins. Um, shout out to y'all team. Keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Hey, we love Sammy too. Now. Hey, he's from Florida, so we got no choice but to love Sammy Watkins. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what he does, though, for real. Appreciate y'all listening. Thank you. Uh, and just like Sammy Watkins won't be with the Ravens anymore because he ain't going to visit nobody else. We got him signed. And da, 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 da. That's it. That's a wrap. But I'm out, y'all. Love y'all.